Hey there, this is Natalie, and this video was meant to go up yesterday for Halloween, but I didn't get it finished in time. So if you're watching this when it first went up, um, happy Dia de los Muertos. Still, I thought I'd cover something a little bit different and Halloween themed in this video. As you may remember from back when The Simpsons was still good and you still watched it, each year The Simpsons do a special Halloween episode called Treehouse of Horrors, which is usually a set of three or so short parodies that aren't canon in terms of the limited continuity The Simpsons actually has. These episodes are an annual tradition and can quite often be a bit experimental in terms of the art styles used and the way the regular characters are reinterpreted. So why do we care about that here on an anime channel made by someone who only found out The Simpsons was still even on two days ago when someone told me about this in a tweet? Well, the 2022 Treehouse of Horrors episode actually featured a parody of Death Note for which they adopted a completely different art style and redesigned the Simpson family as anime characters. And I have some thoughts on this. Firstly, I want to talk about whether it was any good and show you the way they reimagined the look of the Simpsons characters in an anime art style. And then secondly, I want to talk about what a Simpsons parody means in terms of anime now being mainstream as balls. As a quick sidetrack, Yesterday, as well as being Halloween, was also the second anniversary of my channel being monetized. I hit 1k subscribers on Halloween 2020, and though I did nothing to celebrate because it was 2020, it felt pretty good at the time. Two years on, and having just come back off a long hiatus, which I explained in a channel update video a couple of days ago if you're curious, I'm still greedy for more subscribers, so please consider subscribing and ringing the bell for plenty more anime content, nearly all of which won't be about The Simpsons. So, the segment in the Treehouse of Horrors episode from season 34 of The Simpsons is called Death Tome, and it's only seven or eight minutes long, so obviously it's not a retread of the entire plot of Death Note. Lisa Simpson fills the role of Light Yagami and gets the death tome in the first scene. The instructions are much the same as in Death Note, only she has the additional restriction of not being able to kill the same way twice. In Death Note, Light doesn't have that rule and kills the majority of his victims with a heart attack, but this allows for a bit more comedy with Lisa having to come up with more and more imaginative ways for people to die, like toilet lions and stuff. She tries it out once and kills the character Jailbird, who I always thought was called Snake, who was on TV and about to shoot the internet's most famous cat. After this, the parody version of Rio appears to her, but here he's called Steve Johnson. It's not a bad joke, you know, giving the Shinigami a really ordinary Western name, but it wasn't really the height of comic originality either. And to be honest, that's kind of how I felt about all of the jokes in this segment. They weren't cringe or bad, but there was none of the unpredictability that The Simpsons used to have in its comedy, and I've seen anime abridges on YouTube come up with much funnier parodies than we really got here from one of the most popular comedy franchises of all time. I know that saying the quality of the humour in The Simpsons has declined hasn't been a novel take for about 20 years, but this is the first time I've watched a new episode in at least 10 years, so I'm just saying that the jokes weren't anything special. Some of the visual jokes, like the ads for gender reveal napalm, were kind of funny, but I think the only thing that really made me laugh was Homer acting like a stereotypical drunk Japanese salaryman. Anyway, Lisa then kills Mr. Burns, who's planning to melt the polar ice caps or something, which ties into Lisa's normal characterization in The Simpsons of being an environmentalist. But then Steve the Shinigami points out that there are still plenty of people on the board of his company, Globo Warm, that will do the plan even with Burns dead. So she goes through and kills all of them, having to come up with different and increasingly strange deaths for them as she goes through the list. The next day we see Lisa and Steve outside watching a news broadcast from anime Kent Brockman on a big screen, announcing that the detective Elle knows who is to blame for the recent deaths. Lisa says that nobody will ever be able to figure out how she did it, but Elle, his voice disguised, says it was done with a supernatural book. 
Lisa recognises the way L is written from graffiti she's seen Bart do before, and announces that L's identity is actually L Barto, and Bart, restyled with L's dark circles under his eyes, appears to confront her in an alley. He says he found out what she was doing by reading her diary. She goes to write a name in her death tome, and Bart pleads with her not to kill her own brother, but she's actually writing Steve Johnson's name. He dies, crushed by space junk, and Lisa says she's glad all that's over, but then she turns into a Shinigami herself. It ends with her following along after Bart, who says that now she's a death god, she can at least kill Janie, a girl she'd been complaining about in her diary, to cheer herself up. Now, I've already said what I thought about the comedy in this parody, but what I actually thought was a lot better executed, and in the end funnier than the jokes in the dialogue, was the way the Simpsons characters were redesigned in an anime style. I thought this was really cool, and once they'd shown Lisa, it was fun seeing more and more characters like Marge, Homer, Mr. Burns and Bart appearing with their anime character designs. I especially liked Homer for some reason. They managed to make it really clear which Simpsons characters they were, even before they spoke, while still drawing them in a completely different style, and the backgrounds were also redesigned to make Springfield look more like Tokyo. Visually, I think it was really good. It kind of makes you wonder how, if it's possible to make something as American as The Simpsons look like anime, it wasn't possible for the people who made High Guardian Spice for Crunchyroll to have a go at it. Yep, yeah, I'm still having digs at High Guardian Spice, like a year later, and I have no plans to stop. Still, The Simpsons deeming something like Death Note to be well known enough to do a whole parody of it in their traditional Halloween episode is definitely a sign that anime has really hit the mainstream. It's not the first time The Simpsons has referenced anime. There have probably been plenty of quick jokes in the show that relate to anime, I mean, there are 34 seasons of the thing, but with a quick visual gag or one-liner, it doesn't really matter if all of the audience gets it, so here I'm just going to talk about the times it was a bigger part of an episode that would require the viewer to know what was being referenced to fully enjoy it. Way back in 1999, when The Simpsons was still a really relevant and well-loved show, they did an episode called 30 Minutes Over Tokyo, where the Simpsons family went to Japan, which showed them watching an anime called Battling Seizure Robots and having seizures. They quite like it and end up watching it twice. This was a reference to the infamous Porygon episode of Pokemon, which caused seizures in real life and was subsequently banned. This anime reference was quite brief and was to a story that had been news around the world, relating to Pokemon, already a mainstream global game and anime franchise. In fact, when it came to Japanese media, the episode focused more on Japanese game shows, which at the time were a concept most people associated with Japanese TV more than anime, with a lot of shows at the time joking about Japanese game shows that required contestants to do painful or humiliating things. The next notable time The Simpsons would make a reference to anime was 15 years later, in 2014, with the episode Married to the Blob, which featured many references to Studio Ghibli movies, as comic book store guy began dating a Japanese mangaka named Kimiko. But again, while this was certainly a very anime-inspired episode, it was limited only to the Ghibli references, and Studio Ghibli movies have certainly been something we can consider mainstream for a lot longer than anime in general, what with the links to Disney. Saying that everyone who's aware of Ghibli movies is an anime fan is a bit like saying everyone who watched the Gangnam Style video is a K-pop stan. Death Note came out in anime form in 2006 and 2007, with the manga having started in 2003, so it was already a popular series among anime fans long before The Simpsons even did the Ghibli-inspired episode. If a mainstream TV show wants to parody an anime, especially one with a tone that lends itself to a Halloween special, it's certainly a good choice, given it has long been considered one of the classics that people just getting into anime tend to watch, and there are enough memes and references to it around the internet that a lot of people are aware of the iconic book and the look of Ryuk, even if they haven't actually seen it. I would say its profile was further raised by the live-action Netflix adaptation, but we all know that probably isn't true. And the fact The Simpsons adopted the anime art style rather than playing out the story with the normal Simpsons designs showed that they really did want to go all in with the anime thing for this section. 
This is not something I think they would have done until the 2020s, because while Death Note is well known, it's not up there with the big shonen series like Dragon Ball Z or Naruto, the big game tie-ins like Pokemon, recent smash hits like Attack on Titan or Demon Slayer, or even Sailor Moon when it comes to being universally recognisable in the West. If something like Death Note is now mainstream enough to be parodied on The Simpsons, then that really confirms that American media no longer thinks of that type of show as an obscure niche interest among its audience. I don't think that this is really telling us anything we didn't already know. Even being part of the anime community on places like Twitter has changed over the past few years, with a lot more people taking an interest in talking about anime, for better or worse. The idea of anime becoming increasingly mainstream is one that a lot of people feel a bit divided about, however. On the one hand, of course it's better for anime to have a bigger audience in the West, because it means more success for the anime studios, more shows being made and brought over, and more content like light novels, visual novels and manga getting translated and being made available in the West. A bigger community also means, in theory, more people to share an interest with and get to know, and a bigger potential audience for people like me, so I should be happy about it. But I do share a lot of the concerns some of the more pro-gatekeeping people in the community have, and those are really that a lot of the people now being exposed to anime just don't really like it the way it is. They like the idea of anime, they like the Japanese kids shows they watched, or the Ghibli movies, or Attack on Titan, but as soon as they start watching some of the other stuff anime fans are talking about, whether it's a harem isekai, a romantic comedy like My Dress Up Darling or Izaki-chan, a dark fantasy like Goblin Slayer, or really whatever, it's a bit of a culture shock to them. Especially if they're used to more politically correct Western animation, that is made to be appropriate for kids, like Cartoon Network shows. They don't like fan service, as just one example of what they don't like, but rather than doing what people who didn't like fan service but still liked anime did in the past, and just watching the many, many shows that don't have it, they believe anime needs to change. I personally believe it should be whatever the people who create it want to create, and just look forward to seeing what interesting or entertaining stuff they come up with, so this puts us in opposition. We've seen a big shift in certain directions in Western media over the past few years, and I'm not going to go into all that culture wars stuff, but I'm not a fan of it, and neither are the majority of people who consider anime one of their main interests. For many of us, the last thing we would want to see is anime changing to keep up with Western sensibilities, just to appease a market over here that is becoming increasingly profitable for them in Japan. Anyone can see that actually, doing what the vocal minority says they want doesn't get you anywhere. Just look at the sales of Western comics lately, but they do create a lot of pressure and negative publicity for the things that they deem problematic, and the downside of anime becoming more mainstream is those people turning their attention to it. Now, nobody can stop people hearing about anime and taking an interest in it, regardless of whether they're going to love it as it is, or harp on about the common tropes in it that they find objectionable. But to bring this back around to The Simpsons, consider this. The Simpsons used to be considered subversive and irreverent, and that was what led it to the peaks of its popularity and relevance, but it hasn't been that for many years. In fact, there's a whole generation among its target audience that don't consider it that way at all. But then we have South Park. South Park never tried to become more mainstream, never stopped being willing to make jokes at the expense of literally any political stance, viewpoint, celebrity, or belief system. In short, it never changed what it was trying to do, no matter how much pressure there was. South Park also didn't mind referencing things that weren't mainstream, their first episode that used an anime art style was way back in 2004, with the episode Good Times with Weapons. And South Park is still considered funny. South Park doesn't have a thousand videos and blog posts talking about when and why it stopped being good. Now, whether you like South Park or not, there's a lesson there. And that is that as long as the Japanese industry as a whole does what South Park did, never compromising on whatever they want to make, and continuing to try to satisfy their target audience, regardless of what people from outside of it might think, then everything will be fine. 
From what I've seen from people within the industry, like artists and writers, I get the impression that as creators, that's exactly what they intend to do. Keep making things for the Japanese audience, and if we want to consume it in the West, we can either take it the way it is, or piss off and watch the Netflix reboot of He-Man or whatever. Which is good news. Of course, the corporations that actually fund, produce and broadcast what gets made may be more easily swayed than the creators. So who can really say whether anime becoming more mainstream in the West will change things? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. So that's it from me for this video. Thank you as always to my supporters on Patreon and to everyone else who helps me out by subscribing to my channel and watching my videos. Thanks for watching this one and I hope to see you again very soon.